Welcome to Detroit, Michigan, Motor City is where we find ourselves for the 31st Stadium Review episode, as today we're going to visit Comerica Park, a stadium that absolutely blew me away, the home of the Detroit Tigers. And before we get going, I'm very excited to announce that Stadium Review episodes are now in partnership with Pull Tab Sports, a creative platform highlighting sports and culture across the Midwest. Check them out at PullTabSports.com. Comerica Park opened up in downtown Detroit, Michigan in 2000, replacing the former Tiger Stadium, which actually was a really beautiful and unique jewel box style ballpark. However, no matter how cool I think it is, it was definitely old and dated and in need of replacement. And Detroit was definitely a downtown area that needed a lot of revitalization to it. And adding Comerica Park really kicked that off in 2000. And then in 2002, Ford Field was built for the Detroit Lions in the adjacent property, made from an old abandoned warehouse. And then the sporting aspect of the downtown revitalization really finished up in 2017 with the opening of Little Caesars Arena right in the same area. So now all four Detroit professional sports teams are playing downtown. And I actually did the second stadium review on Little Caesars Arena. And here we are today at number 31. What makes this stadium really interesting is the blend of design elements. As I was really blown away as they implemented together both modern aspects and a lot of retro aspects that so many ballparks at the time really show off. And today, the stadium holds a total capacity of 41,083. Once arriving at the stadium, I actually spent a lot of time exploring the outside of the ballpark. And there was something interesting to see at almost every angle from the outside. As the exterior gives off a retro vibe with the old classic red bricks, but at the same time it definitely has kind of a modern aesthetic with all the metal fencing and rails. On the north side of the ballpark, the street was actually closed down to allow for more pedestrian traffic. And I absolutely love the tall pillars lining the outside of the building with the tigers on them. And there is so much to be said about all the different tiger aesthetics that they have around the outside of the ballpark. From the large statues to the heads being shown, to this tiled logo I found, and also this super cool design on an exterior door. Just from walking on the outside of the ballpark, I was really impressed and eager to make my way inside. Oh, you can just slip in there. Why is it slip in? After making our way all around the outside of the stadium, it was time to enter, and we decided to go in under the large left field scoreboard, which is a really cool spectacle to behold looking up at it. Now let's get in there and have a look at the concourse. The concourse of the ballpark was just as impressive as the exterior, as it carried over all the red brick design. And from the gates where we entered, we were immediately met with some historic statues out in left center field. These stainless steel and granite statues stand at around 11 to 13 feet tall and commemorate some of the icons throughout the ball club's history. And you actually get a pretty good view of the field of play itself from out there, as there's a large patio where you can stand and watch the game. And you can also get up close and personal with the bushes and ivy that make some of the batter's eye out in straightaway center field. The day we were there was an absolute scorcher in late June, so it was a big relief to see how covered and shaded the concourse was. The green metal beams and piping, as well as the brick food stand, really gave it a more old-timey feel. On the first base concourse, you go past the Big Cat Court which is a big fun kids area and actually includes a merry-go-round inside the ballpark. It's really interesting how this court's really closed in by high walls all around it, but the merry-go-round had some beautiful vintage aesthetics to it, complete with some tiger stripes. And they were also doing some tiger stripe face paints. Man, why didn't I get that? Some parts of the concourse give you a pretty good view down to the field, and you can see how a lot of these private seating options are tucked up under the overhang of the concourse and in the shade. And I found it really interesting how they kind of have wooden lawn chairs. And once again, the Tigers were trying to showcase their rich history, as they had these giant mobile stands that were absolutely massive, towering inside the concourse, each one highlighting a different decade in Tigers baseball. The coolest part of the concourse by far had to be in this bushfire grill which is an open air picnic area off of the third base side of the concourse and has some really sweet visuals as well as a really unique food menu. And how about this, they also have a ferris wheel in the ballpark. So not only do they have a carousel, but also a ferris wheel made out of baseball spinning around. And attached off of this picnic area is the beer hall, which was open to the general public when we were there. So of course I had to take a peek inside and film around some. Wait a second, I take that all back. The best part of the concourse had to be this Tigers dude. What an absolute legend with the Tiger muscle hat. 
The upper concourse didn't have nearly the same amenities, but it was rather open and spacious which is nice, and it did have a pretty good view of Ford Field next door. And also, I really like this left field view from the concourse that shows you the scoreboard and a great view of the stadium. And while on the concourse, of course we had to visit the team shop and pick up a souvenir, so I always grab a baseball, so here's a pretty cool Comerica Park baseball that I picked up, and I really like the Vicious Tiger logo on it. They had some pretty good food options actually at the ballpark, so I snagged a sausage topped with onions and peppers, as well as a pretzel, and I was actually really surprised by the cheese the pretzel came with. It was a little spicy and actually really tasty. And later in the game, I grabbed a pizza. Being Detroit, had to grab a little Caesar pizza, and this was my dinner for the day before heading back to Wisconsin. It was a little sad looking, but not too bad overall. And probably the best find there had to have been this blue alcoholic slushy. Yes, there is kind of a trend going where I'm always getting these at MLB stadiums, but they're just too delicious to pass up. And I think they even called this Tiger Blue. Now that is just great, and there's nothing better than this on a hot summer day at a ball game. For seating layout, we actually started out the game sitting up high in the upper section, which actually wasn't steep enough to see into the dugouts on the near side. However, some of the top rows were covered by a roof, which was good because on a day like this, you needed that roof, because we actually fried out there for a little bit. The upper levels also have some fantastic views to the city just beyond right center field. There are two main decks in the ballpark from foul pole to foul pole with some private sections in between the two. However, what's really interesting is that the upper section, kind of by right field or first base, is actually detached from the rest of the upper section that goes from first base all the way to the left field foul pole. It was a very interesting design choice, kind of to break up the monotony of the two section design wrapping all the way around. Later in the game, we actually made our way to sit in this detached section, and I found it really interesting that it was actually a little bit lower than the rest of the upper deck. In left field, the bullpen separates the field of play from the seats, and those left field seats have the same slope as the rest of the lower section. Typically in outfield seats, you'll see them a little bit steeper so you can see over the outfield wall and into the outfield. But that's not the case here, as these left field seats aren't that steep, which leads them to be really far away from the field very quickly. However, we did spend some time under the left field scoreboard, as there was a bar running the length of the scoreboard, and it was a great place to take some cover from the sun. I was a big fan of the scoreboard as a whole in left field, as it had a script Tigers going over it, as well as statues of two Tigers at either end. And unlike the Tigers in front of the stadium that are just gray, these ones are actually colored in orange and black. And you notice the light poles on top of the scoreboard, so I really enjoy the classic toothbrush lights that are used around the ballpark, which really give it a more classic feel to it. In center field there aren't any seats, but there's a good concourse that lets you watch the game from there. Right field has some seats that are a little bit steeper than those in left field, but above those right field seats is the Pepsi porch, so we took some time to go all the way up to the top of the Pepsi porch, which gave you some okay views of the game because you're quite a ways away from the field at that point. However, there's a lot of really nice amenities up there, and it's a really cool spot to hang out, so maybe if you aren't the biggest baseball fan and you want to go to a game just to hang out and see the experience, this may be the place for you. Plus, you get really close to all the tiger booties. Even though at the start of the game the attendance wasn't as great, the atmosphere was starting to build with the hype video, and the Tigers taking the field. However, some of that hype was kind of removed quite quickly when the Rangers hit a home run early in the first half. However, the Tigers had a great response. And check out the fountains going off in center field as it's a great touch to use instead of fireworks. And the Tigers logo of the scoreboard was also flaming. How cool is that? The field of play itself has some pretty interesting aspects to it, as it has the deepest straightaway center in all the MLB at 420 feet. And the ballpark plays super deep. In 2022, it was actually the last place ballpark in home runs, which makes it really interesting that Miguel Cabrera won the triple crown while playing his home games at Comerica Park, because you have to have some serious power to hit the ball out of the park. Also of note is the dirt area around home plate, which is shaped like a home plate itself, which I think is absolutely iconic. Comerica Park is also the only ballpark in MLB to have a strip of dirt between the pitcher's mound and home plate. And this strip is also called a keyhole, and it was pretty common in a lot of older ballparks. The fans were actually pretty into the game, as they were chanting a few times and also had the wave going. 
Another thing to note though is the amount of seagulls. Being so close to the Detroit River, they make their way over to pick up a few snacks at the ballpark, and they also made friends with this little pigeon. Overall, the Tigers actually played a pretty good ball game. And I really enjoyed seeing this RBI by Spencer Torkelson, who I also saw a year earlier hit an RBI walk-off with the West Michigan Whitecaps in my review of LMCU Ballpark, home of the single-A affiliate for the Tigers. Plus, we had the same first name, so I'll definitely check it. But the ball game wrapped up of a final score of 7-3 in favor of the Detroit Tigers. Thanks so much for watching this episode. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see many more just like this one. Thanks. Bye.